calculate your profit first when quoting landscaping jobs. This is something that has helped me out tremendously, especially this year. I can't believe it's taken me seven years to figure this out and I wanna share with you right now. I'm on a landscape quote and I always used to try to give the customer the best possible price I can and then whatever's left over at the end of doing all my itemized pricing is what I would get to keep. And if any little tiny thing went wrong or didn't go as according to plan or took longer, I would always be the one who was always out there dripping in sweat, working for free, and being totally frustrated, not only with my life and my business, but myself, right? So I hated the landscaping business and I wanted to quit. And I never thought it was possible to make any money. Now, things are changing a bit. Now you definitely gotta hustle. I know this is a hustle, man. Oh, I gotta shit, shit. But look, if I'm quoting a property now, I say I need to make this much for a half a day or for a full day or for a day and a half. And you always calculate everything so the odds are in your favor. And if you don't make the profit that you need to make before adding in all the other components, then you just can't do the job. That's all there's to it. Because if you quote jobs wrong, you'll have to do three jobs in order to make the amount of profit that you can make on one job. But you would say, how, well, how can I do that? I can't do that. I can't do that because I need to keep work coming in. I, well, you can if you learn marketing and advertising and you know how to keep your phone ringing, then you can keep skimming the cream off the top indefinitely and then getting rid of all the other jobs that don't pay. And you're the one creating this. Does that make sense? You're the one creating this. And then another thing that I've learned is being very conscious about how, how long stuff actually takes. Oh, look at all that. We could do all that in like, oh, I take about an hour. No, it won't. Are you calculating setup, breakdown time? Time for breathing, time for eating. Are you calculating yourself actually being there doing the physical job? Or are you calculating maybe for somebody who can work at 70% of the capacity that you can work? How are you calculating it? And I think you have to be in the real world realistically and do it for a long time before you can get to the point where you know how long stuff actually takes. So one thing that I've been doing is helping me a lot, I'm just sharing is slowing down. I have so many lessons to learn in this small business game. It's crazy. So many lessons to learn that, like I've said in a previous video, it it really does kind of boggle my mind how somebody gets started in a business and blows up a million dollar business within the first year or two. When, how did they learn all those lessons so fast? They must have a really, really high IQ or they must be really, really good at facing their own ego and facing their own blind spots because the blind spots, the little things that you sweep under the rug, are the things that will always come back to bite you every single time. It never fails, <laughs> it never fails. Lesson is repeated until lesson is learned. Chinese proverb, fall down 99 times, get up 100, and don't blame other people. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> this thing I've been doing if I'm walking a property with a customer, just take that extra few minutes and divorce yourself from chaos. You go, hmm. Mm -hmm. Even if you have to take a shovel out and start cutting or digging dirt or pulling weeds with the stopwatch for a little bit to see how long it actually takes. And then the next thing is your process. How are you doing things? One of my big faults is picking up and putting down a task a million times. Oh, let's go in the truck and make phone calls for half an hour. Screw that. 
let's make a YouTube video. Okay, now let's go work for a little bit. Work. Oh, the, now the neighbor's coming out. The neighbor needs a quote. Oh my God, I go back to, oh, I forgot. I got to call this person. Oh my God, it's noon. I forgot. I got to call this. Now we're gonna, you're doing so many different things and wearing so many different hats at once that you're moving 13 things forward one inch instead of moving one thing forward 13 inches. So if you can block time, I'm struggling with this. Let me know in the comments below if you're struggling with block time. Is where you get the job site set up. If you got a crew, you get the crew working, set the tone, show them what to do, get everything going. And then you go sit in the truck and make all the phone calls. Or you have a special time or times of week that you return phone calls. Or you go do all your quotes and get them all done, or all your paperwork. So the next thing is, okay, you get efficient and you get good at that. Now you start cramming too much into your schedule where it's overlapping and just like swapping yourself to now you're cutting corners and then it comes back to bite you. I really, really, really believe that you pay now or you pay later. And if you take the time to be organized, then you can do it right. But the objection is, well, what if I don't have the time to be organized because I'm not making the money and I have to work every second of the day to make it work? Then I think that the next thing is to be more cognizant about the prices. Raise the prices a little bit. Do a little bit less work. Work, whatever you define that as. Raise the prices a little bit. Do a little bit less work. And then schedule in things like... See, I'm... I'm stuttering because this is what I struggle with you know what let me get in my truck real quick check this out then life happens you get off work and you're gonna tackle this thing you're gonna fix this piece of equipment you're going to do it. And the second you're getting home from work, somebody in your family calls and you have a family emergency or an urgent fire to put out, right? And you go to put the thing out and instead of taking an hour, it takes three hours and then it extends into the entire night. Now you're too tired to do anything, so you can't do it. You do it tomorrow. Everything that you do, Murphy's Law will take effect. It'll take three times longer. It'll cost three times as much. So this is the really thing I'm thinking about is scheduling Murphy's Law into everything, calculating all the things that will go wrong, all the emergencies, all the things, and stop scheduling everything and planning everything to work out perfect. Plan it all out to work out imperfectly. Plan for all the worst case scenarios. I'm listening to this book. I just finished this book right now called The 12 Week Year on audible.com. I'll put a link in the description below for audible.com 30 day trial. It's awesome. But this book, The 12 Week Year, is all about taking an entire year and compressing it into 12 weeks. And, and you talk about these CEOs like Steve Jobs and all these people saying that like, do, do the one thing. You do the most important high value tasks first, and then everything else either gets done later or not at all. Well, if you're not in a financial position to hire and delegate all that other stuff to other people and it doesn't get done, eventually it'll catch up with you. And now you're just, you know, maybe choking the goose that lays the golden egg. All of these scenarios and situations that we learn at from other people and in books, even what I'm discussing about right now, might be really good advice for somebody on a certain, you know, level two, level three business, but might be horrible, horrible advice for the guy who's just getting started. Right, so I think you got to get in where you fit in. Get in where you fit in is my favorite saying. Get in where you fit in. Get in where you fit in. If you're at a stage right now where you got to work a hundred hours a week for three years straight and iron out all those lessons inside of yourself, then that's still maybe what you got to do. And maybe once you get going on the path, you realize it'll only take you six months of working like that. There's cycles and seasons for everything. And the only final thing I want to say is beware of when things are really, really good. I'm not being pessimistic. Because what goes up must come down. What goes down must come up. And not getting overly excited when things are too good or getting overly down when things are down. Smooth it out, right? And don't forget to... Um, 
to smile. Because when you realize you're the one who chooses everything that happens in your life, consciously or unconsciously. The problem, the word problem means to throw forth. Spiritually, we create it so we can learn from it. Without problems, you don't have a life. Think about all the problems that you've had in your life that you've overcome that have made you mm, a winner. And they've forged you into the person that you are today. Forged like steel. Character. So if you sow a thought, I think that Norman Vincent Peale said this, sow a thought, you reap an action. Sow an action, you reap a habit. Sow a habit, you reap a character. Sow a character, and you reap your destiny. All right, I'll talk to you soon.